Hello aspirants, looking at current affairs for 26th Jan, the news items picked up from the Hindu newspaper are these 14, we will look at them in detail. The first one, Supreme Court to hear plea against states Karni Sena. So this is regarding Padmavat, we have discussed it quite often, even in the last video we have discussed it. So Supreme Court had actually ordered that no state should pass any prohibitory orders against the screening of this film. So this film should be screened. If there is violence expected, then this is, it is the state, state government's responsibility to ensure that peace is maintained. So here actually pleas have been uh, you know, uh, initiated in the Supreme Court and Supreme Court has agreed to hear these pleas and the, the demand is that contempt of court action should be taken against the states Gujarat, Haryana and Rajasthan. So these governments and the Karni Sena members, they have aggravated the incidents of violence presently. Even school children, you must have heard of the incident, school bus carrying children at Gurugram in Haryana, former Gurgaon in Haryana. Here, members suspected to be of Karni Sena pelted stones on the school bus carrying children. So such incidents taking place have resulted even the public property theater premises have been destroyed by the Karni Sena. So the lack of preventive measures by the law enforcers in the state, the state has to maintain law and order. So it has to take action. So this has been highlighted and contempt of court action has been demanded against the state governments. So Supreme Court is going to hear this plea. The next is India Asian ties to focus on freedom of navigation, Modi. So we have been discussing about the 25th India Asian commemorative summit too. So here the Prime Minister Narendra Modi is, has highlighted that security and freedom of navigation will be at the heart of this India Asian cooperation in the 21st century. So we know the South China Sea here which, uh, which is dominated by China is a cause of concern for the Asian nations too and even for India. So to promote and maintain peace and stability, maritime security, safety, freedom of navigation and overflight in the region, which has been reiterated quite often, the two nations, the two sides, India and ASEAN, ASEAN which is a grouping of 10 nations, have come together and at this commemorative summit, the Delhi Declaration has been adopted. So this is a joint statement which has been issued on this commemorative summit. So this Delhi Declaration talks of you know, security and freedom of navigation as well as it talks about tackling terrorism together. So this is the second issue. So terrorism is also a cause of concern in the region. Islamic State and other forms of radicalism is being highlighted here. So the country amongst Asian countries which is suffering majorly because of terrorism through Islamic State is Philippines. So we have seen this incident to the Marawi region in Philippines. It was siege under siege by two brothers who were associated with Islamic State or who were you know, inspired by Islamic State. So here also India had supported the Philippines president Duterte. So he has also appreciated India's efforts, the 5 lakh dollars assistance which India provided to resettle the victims of this Marawi siege. Also, Philippines wants to cooperate with India. They are studying the Aadhaar card scheme of India. So they also want to issue security identity cards for Philippine citizens. So, on these lines, they are looking at Aadhaar card of India. So this cooperation is also there. Another nation amongst Asian, that is Myanmar. Here also, the issue of rehabilitation of Rohingyas came forth. India is also, you know, discussing a housing project as such, which it will build to rehabilitate the Rohingyas in Myanmar. So this is that. Then next is multiple chief guests, a first for Republic Day. So on Republic Day, we have heads of uh, nations, which are, you know, any head of any nation who is called to preside over the Republic Day as the chief guest. So for this year's Republic Day, there was no single leader who was invited, but all 10 leaders of Asia. Association of Southeast Asian Nations were present as chief guests of Republic. So this was the first time that this has happened. So this shows the significance of ASEAN for India as well. And on this Republic Day parade, the India's long-range subsonic cruise missile Nirbhay was showcased. So Nirbhay has a range of over 1000 kilometers. So you should know what is Nirbhay. A subsonic cruise missile. 
The supersonic cruise missile is Brahmos, which has been jointly developed with Russia. So, supersonic means its it, it speed is faster than the speed of sound. Sonic means sound. Subsonic means it is having speed less than the speed of sound. So, it's a long range subsonic cruise missile. Then also Rudra, which is the weaponized advanced light helicopter of India. This also made a debut at the Republic Day Parade along with Nirbhay. So these two are highlighted. Also Akash, the surface to air missile of India was there along with Brahmos. Netra, Netra is the name for airborne early warning and control system of India. So this is also part of the military component of the parade for Republic Day. Then next is... Padma Vibhushan for Ilaya Raja. So, this is President Ramnath Kovind. He awarded 85 Padma Awards as such, which were announced on Republic Day. So, the Padma Vibhushan is the Bharat Ratna is actually the highest honor. After that comes Padma Vibhushan, then Padma Bhushan and Padma Shri. So, out of 85, 73 were Padma Shri Awards. Padma Vibhushan Awards have been given basically to Ilaya Raja and Ghulam Mustafa Khan. The third Padma, these are music composer directors and the third Padma Vibhushan went to senior RSS, RSS ideologue P. Parmeshwar who was instrumental in building the Sun Kedar in Kerala. So these three were conferred Padma Vibhushan. Padma Bhushan went to various uh, personalities including the sports personalities M.S. Dhoni and Pankaj Advani. Then Padma Shri Awards, the 73 Padma Shri Awards were given to people from diverse fields. So, who, those who have served the poor, those who have set up free schools, popularized tribal arts. This is a tribal woman from Kerala who has prepared herbal medicines from memory and has helped people who are bitten by snakes and insects. So, she was conferred with Padma Shri. Then there is another Murli Kant Petkar who is India's first Paralympic gold medalist. Paralympics is for people with disabilities. So, he had lost his arm in 1965 into Pakistan war. So, he has also been honored with Padma Shri. Then another significant personality in this is a person internationally acclaimed Gond artist that is Bhajju Shyam. So, he has depicted Europe in his Gond paintings. So he has become very popular. So, he has also been awarded Padma Shri. Then a Tamil Nadu's Raj Gopalan Vasudevan who has who is known as the plastic road maker of India. He has developed patented and innovate he has developed this method which is an innovative method which is also patented to reuse plastic waste to construct roads. He has also been awarded Padma Shri. Then next is Ashoka Chakra for IF men who died in Jammu and Kashmir. So Ashoka Chakra is the India's highest peacetime gallantry award. So this was conferred on Corporal Jyoti Prakash Nirala. So he, is of, he was of the Indian Air Force who died fighting militants in Kashmir. So this is the third Ashoka Chakra for the Indian Air Force and first for ground combat as such. So this is there. Other medals also like Kirti Chakra, Shorya Chakras and Param Vishish Seva Medals, Sena Medals. You now all were also announced. There was also this Tatrakshak Medal for the Indian Coast Guard. Then next is 8 children from Northeast among 18 Bravery Award winners. So there were children from Northeast who, who were significantly present in the Bravery Award winners which are given to children. So amongst uh, 18, you can see 8, 4 from Nagaland, 2 from Mizoram, 1 from Manipur and Meghalaya each. They were awarded National Bravery Awards for 2018. Some of them have been honored posthumously too. Posthumously means after their death. National Bravery Awards. Then next is CGI meets senior judges. No breakthrough yet. So the Chief Justice of India, Deepak Mishra, he has met with his four senior most judges, four senior most colleagues to discuss issues raised by them in the press conference on Jan 12. So here a source close to the four judges has said there are too many issues other than the roster. That how, you know, Cases are allotted to various benches. So apart from that, there are other issues also and the, the, the meetings which have taken place so far have not resulted in anything substantial. So issues still remain. There is no breakthrough yet is the news coming. Then next is US diplomat quits Rohingya panel, slams Suu Kyi. So this is veteran US diplomat Bill Richardson 
who was appointed as one of the members in this 10 member advisory body which was appointed by the Myanmar government so this advisory panel as such is an international panel appointed by Myanmar but he resigned saying that this is a whitewash and accused the country's leader Aung San Suu Kyi of lacking moral leadership so actually in this 10 member advisory board is going to make its first visit to western rakhine state presently there are 7 lakh rohingya muslims who have fled from myanmar recently so here mr richardson had actually got into an argument with Aung San Suu Kyi during a meeting as such because he said that there are two reuters reporters who are on trial accused of breaching the country's official secrets act so these people were reporting about rohingyas but when this point was put forth by mr richardson the leader ms suki said that this was not part of the work of the advisory board so that is why now he has quit the panel this is the news you can see then next is un hosts fresh syria talks in vienna so this is regarding syria the syrian state uh, condition political situation presently requires action because the Syrian government headed by Syrian president Bashar al-Assad which is supported by Russia and the Syrian opposition which is supported by the western powers are in conflict so what is happening is that there are there are peace talks which have been initiated so UN has initiated fresh efforts now earlier two talks have failed to uh, you know there were two days talks presently in Myanmar there were eight previous rounds of talks in Geneva initiated by UN but these failed because those two sides didn't even meet each other. The reason for this being given is that there is a separate Russian diplomatic push taking place. So Russia is having a separate peace conference in the Russian Black Sea port of Sochi. So here also it is Russia, Iran and Turkey which are supporting these peace talks. So this is actually resulting in UN talks not get be, UN talks being undermined. Okay. Then the next news item is GST mop up in December rises to 86,703 crore. Trend reverses. So we have been seeing over the months that GST collection had dropped because GST collection in the month of September was 92,150 crores, but then after that it has dropped. In October it came to 83,000 and in November it was 80,000 crores. So now it has picked up again for the month of December. The collection is 86,703 crores. It also the finance minister said that GST taxpayer base has touched 1 crore. So there are 1 crore GST taxpayers in the country. Of these 17.11 lakh are composition dealers. So they are under the composition scheme. So they have a lower turnover. So they have to file returns every quarter every four months so this is the news coming forth now also it is said that the with the rollout of eway bill which is planned to be rolled out from first feb 2018 there will be further curb on tax evasion and gst would be strengthened so eway bill will be applicable for all goods which are transported having value exceeding rupees 50,000. so when transportation takes place from one state to another on a pan india basis then eway bill is generated so here composition scheme and e-way bill is detailed now. There have been various changes in composition scheme too. So here you can see even the turnover, annual turnover as such has been revised quite often and now presently it is at rupees 2 crore turnover. So after rupees 2 crore if you are having an annual turnover then you can apply under this composition scheme and you don't need to file GST returns on a monthly basis but it can be done on a quarterly basis and there is a different rate, a uniform rate of tax as such for manufacturers and traders at 1%. And this is regarding the e-way bill. So before transporting goods that are worth more than 50,000 crore, this e-way bill needs to be generated. So information has to be put on the GST portal and e-way bill is generated. There is a unique e-way bill number which is communicated to all three entities involved. The supplier, the transporter and the recipient. So this e-way bill as such, uh, you know, has is also going to result in the better compliance of GST. Then next is remove GST oddity on MDRs. So the bankers have written to the finance minister seeking a resolution for the issue of double taxation for transactions through debit and credit cards. So under GST double taxation is taking place. 
तो डेबिट क्रेडिट कार्ड ट्रांजेक्शन दीज आर सर्विस प्रोवाइडेड सो अंडर गुड्स एंड सर्विस टैक्स जीएसटी देर इज अ टैक्स एप्लीकेबल ऑन दिस मर्चेंट डिस्काउंट रेट सो दिस मर्चेंट डिस्काउंट रेट विच इज अ फी पेड टू द बैंक दैट हैज इंस्टॉल द पीओ एस टर्मिनल एस सच सो दिस इज कॉल्ड द एक्वायर बैंक सो वेन एवर द मर्चेंट इज डूइंग अ ट्रांजेक्शन यूजिंग दिस पॉइंट ऑफ सेल टर्मिनल देन दिस रिडक्शन इज डन and a part of this fee pay, uh, this fee is also paid by the acquirer bank to the issuer bank the bank to which the card holder who is using the card the, the customer so the whatever bank card do they have that bank also gets a part of the fee and the third entity which gets a part of the fee is the payment network so the payment network like mastercard visa which is the network which is providing the payment the card so that is also getting a part of the fee so gst as such is paid by both acquirer bank and the issuer bank so gst is uh, applied on financial services so financial services gst is at 18% so this is double taxation which is taking place on mdr as such for debit and credit card transactions so this has been highlighted by the bankers they have written to the finance minister to resolve this issue so another point which is there is for the mdr central government has also said that this mdr amount will be reimbursed for all debit card transactions below rupees 2000 so this was expected to start from 1st jan 2018 and would be for 2 years but the subsidy amount has not yet been received by any banks it has not been put into effect yet so this was also a scheme highlighted by, you know put in put into effect by the government because it it would prove as a relief to small merchants and encourage them to accept digital payments otherwise digital payments one require mdr deduction also plus there is double taxation is another issue of the banks so here you can see how mdr works so when a card is swiped there is this mdr fee deducted by the acquirer bank and also this is shared between three bank which is providing the pos machine is acquirer bank the card issuing bank and also the payment network and this is regarding the plan which was announced that mdr charges for digital payments up to rupees 2000 would be borne by the government government would pay for them okay. then next is duty drawback raised on 102 export items so the country's exports need to be made more competitive in the overseas market for which the government has announced that industry rates of duty drawback for 102 tariff items has been enhanced increased so there will be more duty drawback rates received as such so this duty drawback basically means the drawback means the refund of duties taxes and fees which are imposed on imported merchandise which is subsequently exported so there are merchandise like No material which is required and processed, and then it is again exported. So for all such imported materials, whatever duties have been paid, they they can be drawn back. So that is the duty drawback scheme. So this duty drawback has been enhanced as such for 102 tariff items by the government now. Then next another issue which is highlighted by exporters, which has been in news quite often, is regarding the cash flow being affected because of delayed refunds. an increase in input cost under gst so this is also an issue of the exporters then next is a buyback offer too good to be true so this is regarding saraswati commercial india limited which is a little known firm listed on bombay stock exchange but it has created a record presently so its market capitalization is around 1.52 crores and its shares were last traded at 14.71 a piece but now it has announced a buyback offer means it will buy buy back its shares at the uh, you know at a price of 978 rupees per share instead of 14 rupees so it is going to buy shares worth almost 6 crores so this has been announced this uh, this company you can see this firm saraswati commercial india limited is actually a mumbai based non banking finance company so it is paying a close to 67 times the market price to its shareholders so the company has announced this because it believes that its current market price does not reflect the fair value of its stock so its main business activity of this company non banking finance company is investment trading in shares and securities and lending activities recently it also merged with another listed group entity and so it is saying that there is a need for 
uh, you know, getting true value of its shares on the stock exchange. So that is why this has been announced. So its annual report of the firm also had said that shares worth nearly 60 crores in various listed entities are there and also 35 crore worth of shares in unlisted entities which it has. So this is there. And uh, you should also know that the promoters of this uh, you know, firm hold 73.35% stake in it. Remaining 26.65% is held by the public in the form of shares. And of these also now there will be a buyback. So this is the buyback price which has been detailed out. Then next is the last news item. Auto industry wants stable GST rate ride. So this is regarding automotive industry making its request to the central government to quickly stabilize GST implementation because what is being seen is prices or rates of GST are being changed for various commodities. So this results in hindrances for the automobile sector. Also there is the issue of crude prices. So crude oil whether it would come under GST or not is another issue plus also crude prices presently are a cause of concern because when earlier crude prices were low, government increased additional excise duty. So the crude prices internationally were low, but in the country they remained the same. So this was done by the government, but now the automobile sector says that when the crude prices are going up now, so the government should roll back these excise duties now, which has not been done. So this is also a cause of concern because of course it will affect the auto industry. Then another issue is of electric vehicles. So electric vehicles, the demand has been made that they should be exempted from this 6% excise duty which is imposed on them, which is actually imposed on polluting SUVs. So this is there. Also they say there should be adequate charging infrastructure provided. Government should provide subsidy up to 25% of the cost of the charge, uh, you know, charging stations as such too. And also the FAME scheme is highlighted that the FAME scheme should al be allowed minimum 5 year extension by the government. So what is this FAME scheme also? We will see. So here you can see the, you know, the fiscal year and the number of passenger and commercial vehicle production is shown here. How it has increased over the years. India's rank in global auto production. So in 2016 we have reached rank 5. And custom duties as such on various entities are shown here. And this is regarding the FAME scheme. So this FAME scheme was announced as part of the National Electric Mobility Mission Plan. So NEMP was announced by the government, former government as, as uh, in 2015 and by the government as such in 2015 and this target was of 2020. So, NEMP 2020 target was that there should be sale of 6 to 7 million units of e-vehicles. So, that was the target. So, this FAME scheme is for, you know, FAME stands for faster adoption and manufacturing of hybrid and electric vehicles. So, this FAME scheme was also launched in 2015 for a two-year period. Till, so, it ended in March 2017. It has been extended for six months too. So, now the demand is that it should be extended for another five years as such. So, under the scheme, hybrid and electric vehicles were receiving incentives. So, depending on the technology, the battery operated as such, scooters, motorcycles were eligible for incentives. So, that is FAME scheme. So, these are the news items. Thank you.